Let's start with a brand new Laravel project and let's call it Vault Sidebar. We are going to use the Laravel Breeze starter kit and we are going to use Livewire with Vault class API and Alpine. Let's use dark mode support, test for testing, and I will initialize a GitHub repository. And even though we're not going to use any database on this project, let's use SQLite anyway. Now let's jump into the project folder. Now I'm going to install an Alpine.js plugin that I'm going to use for the sidebar. And this plugin is called Collapse. So I'm going to use this command right here to install it. Okay, let's open the project in VS Code. And in order for me to load this plugin that I just installed in Alpine.js, I need to make a modification to the bootstrap.js file. So let's open resources, JS, bootstrap.js. And now I need to import the plugin that I just installed. And I can do it with import collapse from Alpine.js collapse. Next, I'm going to import Alpine and Livewire from vendor Livewire, Livewire this, Livewire.esm. This is because I need to load the plugin using the Alpine object. And because Livewire internally is going to try to initialize Alpine, I need to initialize Livewire by myself. So first, let's start Livewire manually and then use Alpine plugin to load the collapse plugin. Now, at this point, if you're not using her, you can use PHP Artisan Serve to start your application. But because I am using Laravel Herd, I can simply go to my browser and navigate to Vault Sidebar .test and I get the welcome page. And back in VS Code, I'm going to make sure to start a Vit server with npm run dev and then go back to the browser. Now, at this point, you may think everything is working fine. But if you open the developer tools in Chrome, you will see that we have a couple of errors. And this is telling me that there are multiple instances of Livewire and Alpine running. This is because of the change that we just made in the bootstrap.js file. To fix this issue, we are going to tell Livewire not to start automatically and instead rely on the configuration script to initialize both Livewire and Alpine. So let's go back to VS Code. And we are going to make this change in the layout file. So let's open resources, views, layouts, app.blade.php. And towards the end of the file, just before the last body tag, let's add the live wire script config directive. If we save this file and then go back to Chrome, because we have a V development server running, the page will auto reload and the error is gone. I also need to make this change in the guest layout, otherwise the login screen will stop working. Now I'm going to create a new layout. For that, I'm going to open a terminal and then run PHP artisan, make component admin layout. This is going to create a new view component inside app view components admin layout. And the corresponding view for that component will be in resources, views, components, admin layout. We're going to move this around in just a second, but first let's go and modify the class for this component. So let's go up to app, view, admin layout. And the only change that I want to make in this component is to change the location of the view and put it in a folder called layouts and then the name of the file is just going to be admin okay let's save this file and now let's move the view to a different folder so let's go back to resources views components i'm going to grab this file and cut it from here and then put it in the layouts folder and after that i'm going to rename it to simply admin.blade.php now, for the contents of the admin layout, I'm simply going to copy the contents of the app layout and then make some modifications. So let's just grab everything from here, head back to the admin.blade.php file, and then paste it here. All right, the first thing I'm going to change here is I'm going to add a new style 
that will prevent Alpine JS components from flickering when you're loading the screen. So just add a new style tag and then inside it add this class x dash cloak. Don't forget the square brackets. And for the styling, simply say display hidden with important. Now let's scroll down up to the first div here. And I'm just going to remove everything except the page content. Now let's add a couple of things that we are going to need for this layer. The first one is going to be a new div with class header. Now this is not a Tailwind CSS class. It's simply a class that I'm going to use in order to then teleport the contents of another LiveWare component into this div. And don't worry if you don't understand that, it will make total sense when we get to the part of adding headers to the page. For now, I'm just going to add a comment here and just say the header will be teleported here. And then below this, we are going to add a LiveWare component called sidebar. Okay, let's save this file. And now let's go to the dashboard page and replace the current layout with the one that we just created. I'm going to close this tab and then go to resources, views, dashboard. And here, instead of extending the app layout, let's instead extend the admin layout. Okay, let's save this file. And as soon as you do that, we are going to get an error saying that the sidebar component doesn't exist. But don't worry, we are going to create this component in the next video. It's now time to create the LiveWire sidebar component. For this, I'm going to open the terminal and then run PHP artisan make vault sidebar. And then I add dash dash class to make this a class based LiveWire vault component. This creates a new file inside resources, views, LiveWire sidebar. And as you can see, as soon as I do that, the error is now gone because our component now exists. Now let's add the contents of our new component. I'm going to close this tab and then open resources, views, LiveWire, sidebar. This component is not going to have any functionality, so you can safely remove all of the code from the start. And in the root element of our component, I'm going to initialize Alpine.js and define an open property that is going to be initially set to false. And this will control how to open and close the sidebar. Now I need to add three divs in the contents of our component. The first one is going to hold the sidebar's mobile toggle that is only going to be visible on small devices. Then I'm going to add another div that is going to hold the actual sidebar itself. And finally, another div that is going to be the overlay that is going to be behind the sidebar when it's open in small devices. Let's add the styles to the first div. Let's say class. And I'm just going to add all of the styles and run you through them one by one, starting with sticky to make this stick to the top and then LG hidden to hide this on large devices. C index of 20 to control the visibility. By default, this will have a white background border on top and bottom, padding X4 by default and on small devices, padding X6, medium devices, padding X8. On dark mode, this will have a background of gray 800 and a border of gray 700. Okay, now let's start adding the contents of our sidebar. Let's add a div for the sidebar container and then add a couple of classes to it. This div will be a flex container with a gap 2 for a gap between items, item center, padding Y4, padding X2. And then inside this div, let's add a button that will control the open and closing of the sidebar when in small devices. And to this button, I'm going to add a few properties and then run through them real quick. The first one is very simple. This is just a type button. And then I'm using the click event from Alpine.js to set the open property equal to true. This will effectively open the sidebar. The reason I'm not toggling on and off is because as soon as the sidebar is open, this button is going to be behind the sidebar. In order to close the sidebar, the user will click outside the sidebar, which means that they will be clicking on the overlay. So on the overlay, we are going to use another click to set the open property back to false. And then for the style of the button, I'm just setting the text to grade 500 and then on hover, 
the text will be gray 600. Okay, now to the contents of the button, I'm going to use the Blade UI package in order to add icons as if they were Blade components. For example, I want to do something like X dash hero icon O bars three, and then add a class of flex shrink zero and size four. This should effectively render an icon that looks like three bars and when the user clicks on that, the sidebar will open. But in order to do that, first I need to install the Blade UI Hero Icons package. So let's open a new terminal and let's run Composer Require Blade UI Kit Blade Hero Icons. Once this is installed, all we need to do next is create a new folder inside Resources and just call it SVG. And that's it. Now we can use all of the hero icons as if they were blade components. And then right above this, I'm going to add a span that will be available for screen readers. And as you can see, now we have the sidebar here and we can see the icon rendered. Later on, I'm going to add breadcrumbs next to this icon. So for now, I'm just going to add the container that will be used to render those breadcrumbs. Here, I'm just creating a div with a class mobile breadcrumbs, which is a class that I'm going to use as an anchor to teleport the contents of a LIBOR component into this element. Okay, now let's move on to the sidebar itself. The first thing that I'm going to do is to add an Alpine property that will be tied to the class translate x0. This class will only be added to this element if open is true. Now let's add the rest of the classes. This one has a lot, starting with transform, which allows us to translate or transform the position of the element. Then we have dash translate x full, which will effectively hide the entire element by completely moving it negatively on the x axis by its entire width. Then we have LG for large devices. And in this case, I'm going to override the translation and just leave the element visible. The next two classes are Transition All and Duration 3000, and this will help with the animation. After that, we have Fixed, Top 0, and Start 0, as well as Bottom 0. This will basically extend the element from top to bottom. Next, I'm using C with a value of 60, so that this will be in front of everything. W64 to add width to the component, white background by default, and then border E to only give this a border on the end. So basically just a border on the right side. And for the border, this will have a border grade 200 by default, then padding top 7, padding bottom 10, overflow Y auto. On large devices, I'll give this a visibility of block, and then end auto for large devices. Next, we have LG bottom zero, and then a couple of WebKit scroll bar properties for browser compatibility, and also some of the same properties, but for dark mode. And right at the end, we have dark BG gray 800 and dark border gray 700. Okay, let's go all the way back. Let's save this, and I believe if we go to the browser, and click on the three bars. The sidebar will open, but we don't have any way of closing it. So let's do that next. Let's scroll down to the overlay div. And here I'm going to add a bunch of Alpine.js properties. First one is X show, and this will depend on the open property, meaning that this will only show if the open property is true. Then we have the X cloak class, and this will help to hide the element while Alpine.js is loading, eliminating the flickering. Then we have X transition opacity, which will create a nice animation on the opacity of the element when it's being shown or hidden. And then we have the click event that will set the open property back to false. All that is left is to add all of the classes of this element. So I'll just paste them in right here. And these are basically fixed to keep this element in an absolute position and using inset zero, I will extend it to all the corners of the background. I use C59 to place this element just behind the sidebar, but above everything else. And then I use BG gray 900 with an opacity of 50. And then on dark mode, we use BG opacity 80. Okay, let's save this. 
And now if we go to the browser and click on the three bars, the sidebar opens and you can see how the overlay is showing up just behind it. And when we click on it, the sidebar closes. And now that we have a nice functionality for the sidebar, we just need to start adding content to it. And we are going to do that in the next video.